Now on Sunrise, Governor Walls getting ready to roll back restrictions. Just how soon the governor could make that announcement and how it could play into the CDC's new guidelines for fully vaccinated Minnesotans. President Biden's first address to Congress set to take place in just hours. We preview his primetime sales pitch for America. Things start drying out today after we picked up a little over half inch of rain yesterday. Get ready for a big warm up in the seven day forecast. Plus food for thought. I have big eyes when I go on the market yeah. and it's even worse if I'm hungry. Two simple tips to preserve your food and stop wasting money. And every love story has a headline. It was titled um, runner looking for trail hero. This couple say they met by chance, but it feels a lot more like pandemic fate. It's Wednesday, April 28th. Care 11 Sunrise starts now. Hey, good morning, Sunrisers. Happy Wednesday. Did you know today is National Superhero Day? But forget about Superman, forget about Spider-Man. We want to hear about the superhero in your life, one that doesn't wear cape or shield their identity. So get that phone out. Tell us who saves the day in your life. Give them a shout out. Ooh. Use the hashtag Sunrisers. You can tweet us. <laughs> you can, uh, yeah, cool. text like a, us too. That's super, very cool. Superhero outfit. Uh, you got to you gotta get it let out a little there, Alicia. <laughs> that's good. But you still have your magical powers. Excellent. Yeah, definitely let us know, Sunrisers. That's great stuff. Guy, hey, you're whipping up a little bit of magic for us too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to be whipping up some 60s for us today. And then for the weekend, I'll be cooking up some 80s. So I'm busy in the kitchen and in the weather department. Look at this. We're clear this morning, right? It's about time. We'll see the sun. We're under partly cloudy skies, temperatures in the upper 30s. Now it does feel a little bit cooler, so grab the jacket, but for sure we'll be able to ditch that by the afternoon. Radar and satellite, absolutely quiet, not tracking much at all. You'll see just that. But what we do have on the uh, visibility board here, you can see those contours starting to darken up a bit. Visibility falling as low as a quarter of a mile in some spots in the state. Not so much in the metro. I mean, you'll see Cambridge coming in at visibility just shy of seven miles. So we're still making out just fine in the metro, but fall could turn just a bit more widespread than what it is and where it's at now. Highs today in the 60s, sunshine for the school day planner. And traffic quiet now near the Rogers area after a few crashes. But uh, as you get closer to Maple Grove, uh, it is in a construction zone, 94 eastbound, seeing a little bit more congestion, a little bit more bumper to bumper action as you t travel towards uh, the Fish Lake split. No other crashes around the Twin Cities metro, but I'll be uh, keeping an eye on some drive times and I have an update for you coming up. Well, Minnesota may be moving closer to a post-pandemic life. Governor Tim Wall says he plans to ease up on some of the remaining restrictions. Kaya is live outside the Capitol in St. Paul. What could change, Kaya, and when? Good morning. The governor says we can expect loosened restrictions possibly as early as this week. And his announcement comes as the rest of the country is adapting to new guidelines, too. Here they are, the new CDC guidelines for outdoor activities. Uh, basically, if you're vaccinated, fully vaccinated, you do not have to wear a face mask at small outdoor gatherings and same goes for dining outdoors at restaurants. That being said, officials still want you to mask up at concerts and sports games, pretty much anywhere that is crowded, even if it is outdoors. Uh, the CDC also says to keep wearing a mask in at indoor spots like salons, the cinema and the gym. The bottom line is clear. If you're vaccinated, you can do more things more safely, both outdoors as well as indoors. It's long overdue and I'm ex excited to actually have a little bit more of a normal summer. As for what exactly could be lifted here in Minnesota, we don't know just yet. Uh, the governor did not reveal that yesterday when he made this announcement that changes are coming. So certainly something we'll be watching out for. Guys? Yeah, we will. A lot of excitement on the horizon here, hopefully. Thanks, Kaya. Let's take a closer look at how we stack up compared to other states. Minnesota joins 23 other states and Puerto Rico with statewide mask mandates. 26 states, including all of our bordering states, do not have statewide mandates.
Well, just how many Minnesotans are who are eligible are fully vaccinated right now? That is this 1.81 who are fully vaccinated, 1.1 million that is, and 2.46 have at least one jab. Now this blue bar, it represents this green on this chart. It's 56% of those eligible for of the state's population have at least a shot. We, of course, are still tracking the COVID-19 infections. So MDH has almost 1,100 new cases reported yesterday. That is a slight drop from the day before, but it is, of course, this two week moving average we're taking a close eye uh, on because look it is tracking downward. It's now under 2000 cases per day. We saw it there at the beginning of April and then before that it was the beginning of January. Now we're also learning that 12 more people have died to stay up to date on what the latest with the pandemic text the word COVID to 763-797-7215. We'll send you back a link to our website where you can read more. Now here's a look at today's other top stories in your morning rush. Minneapolis police are investigating a deadly shooting in the Cedar Riverside neighborhood. Police say it started with an armed robbery in a store near 400 Cedar Avenue around 7 last night. Officers found the store clerk, a man in his 40s with a gunshot wound. He was taken to HCMC where he died. No one is in custody. Derek Chauvin's sentencing being pushed back to June 25th. Originally, it was set for June 16th. The court says the delay is due to a scheduling conflict. Chauvin faces between 10 and 40 years in prison for murdering George Floyd. A recreational marijuana bill is one step closer to a full House vote. Yesterday, the Public Safety and Criminal Justice Reform Finance and Policy Committee passed the bill 11 to 7. It would make recreational cannabis available to anyone over 21. The bill will now go to the Committee of Health and Finance Policy. Surly is ready to welcome you back. The brewery is reopening its beer hall and pizza place on June 1st. If you're looking for a new job, it's also hiring for a bunch of positions. We will have a list of where you can apply on care11.com. And that's your Wednesday Morning Rush. Sunrise is live this morning from the U.S. Capitol, where President Biden will make his first speech to a joint session of Congress later this evening. Now, his address comes as he's nearing his 100th day in office. Here's what we know this morning about the president's first congressional address. President Biden's expected to emphasize his handling of the coronavirus pandemic, the status of vaccinations, and his $1.9 trillion infrastructure and jobs package. He's also expected to touch on a new proposal called the American Family Families plan. This plan will look at things like child care funding, free community college, paid family leave, and child tax credits. Another major topic he's covering, policing in America. Now the audience inside the House chamber is going to be much smaller due to social distancing guidelines. The total number of attendees will be around 200 people, according to officials. Only certain House and Senate members chosen by a lottery system will be there in person. And one of those people, Minnesota Senator Amy Klobuchar. She's going to be part of a group of lawmakers escorting the president into the House chamber for his address. Klobuchar also invited Chris Montana from Denord Craft Spirits as her virtual guest. Denord is America's first black-owned distillery located in Minneapolis. The distillery received federal relief, and they've been able to maintain some operations during the pandemic. Now, the address typically happens in February, but the deadly insurrection at the U.S. Capitol and COVID-19 pushed it back. There's also going to be heightened security following the January 6th attack on the Capitol and after extremists expressed a desire to attack the complex during Biden's address tonight. You can watch his whole speech tonight right here on NBC, and that starts, you guys, 8 o'clock. Interested to see a little more about that $1.9 trillion infrastructure spending plan. Yeah. It's a lot of money. A lot of people looking forward to this. Uh, Alicia, thanks. 608 now. Let's get to Guy with our One Thing Weather. Hey, good morning, guys. Take a look at your visibility in miles. We're making out okay in the metro, but that's not the case everywhere. Brainerd visibility dropping at about four miles. You can see some fog pretty widespread for the northern part of the state. And checking from drive time for you around the metro. It's pretty quiet out there. Seven minutes if you're traveling between Minneapolis and St. Paul. Another traffic camera, 35W35E. Uh, just 12 minutes to get to 694. Well, did you know 40% of the U.S. food supply is wasted every year? That's almost 212 pounds per person. That's amazing. Food experts from around the globe are using today, April 28th, to bring awareness to food waste. I'll see something new on the, on the shelf. I want to try it. I'll get home, end up not liking it, and then I'll end up just throwing it away. 
Now, a lot of us have probably been in the same situation, but here's some food for thought. The amount of food Americans waste has tripled over the past 50 years. We toss nearly a third of the groceries we buy in the trash, costing the average household about 1600 bucks a year. Spoiled food, real or perceived, is one of the biggest reasons people throw things out. Rehydrating can save some of them from the landfill. So these guys were looking a little bit sad, and we soaked them in ice water for about 10 minutes, and they perked right up. It really works well with lettuces and root vegetables as well. Yeah, I do that with my salary when it starts to bend as well. Experts say before going to the store, see what items in your fridge can be used to make a meal, saving time, money, and the planet. Yeah, always uh, looking for some recipes. I love that at the end of the summer months when you just have all these vegetables you have to use and you just kind of throw them into like a pie or Big something. Pie? Yeah. Oh, I was going to say stir fry, but a, yeah. a vegetable pie, mm -hmm. I guess. That's uh, something I'd never thought of. <laughs> a new cooking idea right here. Well, at 610, still ahead, a racist promposal making rounds on social media. It compares picking a prom date to picking cotton. I'm live in Big Lake where the school district is now investigating. Plus, thousands of mosquitoes are getting released into the wild, and it's to try and stop the pest population from growing. Then Love Hurts, a pandemic love story that started with a broken leg. The couple who met by chance, celebrating an entire year together.